Hi, this is Celia Hamilton. I'm the Strategic Planning Manager for the Social Biz User Group. Thanks for listening to this interview. Last month, IBM had a big webcast, uh, webcast called Reinvent the Way Work Works with the Leading Social Platform. It announced the latest in the IBM platform for social business, including updates to IBM Smart Cloud Engage and IBM Same Time. With me today to talk about that keynote session are Rob Axelrod, Chris Miller, and Andy Petisich. If you don't know them, uh, Andy and Rob are President and Vice President, respectively, of Technotics. Chris is the Director of Messaging and Collaboration at Connectria. All are longtime consultants in this uh, ICS space, as well as frequent speakers at all sorts of industry and user group conferences. Guys, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Hello, Glad to be here. You've all had a chance to watch that keynote from last month's webcast. So, uh, what stuck with you the most? Well, right. I guess I'll go first. Yeah, you bring yeah, the first. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, always a town for not face to face um, because we all love to talk. <laughs> I, I took a couple of things away from it, uh, especially having a bit of experience with the things that they were talking about. Uh, uh, one, outside the context of the actual products and things that IBM is delivering, is I thought that their method of delivering it was really pretty neat. Um, the interface for the conference to watch it both real time and after the fact is pretty nice, and it, it really worked well. And in the future, I'd like to see more things delivered that way. That being said, um, I think they had some cool things to show in that they had some legitimate case studies to show the value of, um, especially the cloud offering. Uh, it wasn't really heavy on the same time nine stuff, which is. Mm -hmm. You know, exciting in, a, in its own right, but I, I think with many of these technologies, the, the benefit that you're deriving from not having to deploy it yourself and to be able to use the cloud to easily interact with uh, entities outside the organization, with partners, customers, you know, vendors, things like that, really delivers a great deal more value, and that's some of the stuff that they got into in the keynote. Chris or Andy, you want to jump in? I thought Andy was going to go next. I was just yeah. waiting. I was, all, right, all right. Normally we fight over each other, so we were all being patient this time. It's so polite. Well, yeah, I think maybe we need a video component here so we can each see each other, you know, about to I jump know. in. We're doing all right, cool. right, right. <laughs> Little facial expressions here and there. Um, I will say that uh, this was one of the neatest ones that I've seen because it didn't just talk about the products. It actually uh, gave a, a slight uh, backdrop of, of technological things that have been going on over the years. And, and case in point, it showed how when, you, um, when they took factories and first equipped them for electricity, went from steam to electricity, that um, that, that in itself did not increase the user productivity. It was people thinking around the fact that they no longer had to deal with the infrastructure of the steam and they could capitalize on the infrastructure of the electricity um, to make things like uh, happen in a just-in-time sense, that, that that really aided the productivity, but the technology itself did not. And I think that's an important distinction because we have a lot of vendors these days, you know, Microsoft, IBM, whoever, who are uh, putting out technology, but this this the social thing that IBM is doing is doing um, is really trying to uh, level out the technology and to and to capitalize on how people actually exploit it. Which I, which I thought was a, a very nice thing to talk about, you know. Uh, I was especially interested in the fact that Watson is making phone calls and, and uh, taking phone calls and that uh, he can help you with your banking and, um, and, and all the rest of that stuff. I, I thought that that was pretty brilliant. It kind of reminded me of the old days when um, they just invented the IBM computer that could play, play chess really well, mm -hmm. and now we're getting into the fact where an automated, an automaton, if you will, can, uh, can do a diagnosis for you over the phone, which is which is uh, quite quite interesting. But I also liked what they were doing with um, with the technology in terms of the of the case studies that they were talking about. And the one that I liked especially that they were talking about was the fact that they had they are giving iPads to executives and uh, and letting them engage with their coworkers and engage with the people that that work for them um, in a real time sense with video and audio or uh, or chat or all or all of the above. And quite frankly, 
there are a lot of us that have been using all of the above for uh, for a long time. You know, I, I'm, a lot of times when I'm dealing with uh, with friends and customers, I don't even know where I put things because I've got something that I got in a chat, something I got an email, something I got from the cloud, something that's in, in a storage place, uh, someplace other than my my laptop. And um, to see the effort going on to try to unify this for the executives is the equivalent to me of figuring out that it's not just an iPad, it's not just a phone, it's a device that's going to let you connect in a different way and your whole way of working has to change to really capitalize on it. Um, that guy from the Bureau of Statistics was really cool too, talking about how mm-hmm. uh, there, there was a guy, just so the listeners, there was a guy on there named uh, Lee Masterton, who was the head of technology and strategy and planning for the uh, Australia Board of Statistics, Bureau of Statistics. And he was talking about a friend of his that a month in advance can predict the consumer price index from watching billions of, of uh, prices that are out there. So uh, that's that's pretty snazzy. That can really have a, a deep effect on, on the market. So that's my overview of, of the thing. And you can tell. I mean, I, I did enjoy the parts about the, uh, the actual technology, but I enjoyed the backdrop even more because it filled in uh, the, hum- the human part of the equation. And now, oh, good. Chris. <laughs> you feel like Vanna suddenly. Just turn the letter. <laughs> I'll just turn the letter. Just turn the turn the letter. Now, I, so I'll, I guess we'll all three take a different angle. Mine was a, so this is a, in a weird way repetitious a little bit of what they've done over the years. We first saw work the web, which I still have some of the graphics from that way back in the four or five days, right when we got mm-hmm. into when they first launched I, the whole web services. I still have a T-shirt. Days. You still have a T-shirt. Rob's wearing it right now, actually. <laughs> If but, only we had video. Well, yeah, if we had. But the point <laughs> is that you know they they had worked the web, and then everyone embraced it, and everyone embraced taking their apps to the web. That was their whole push. You know, make sure you can load the HTTP stack. Now it's not just about pushing it to the web, but it's about uh, getting more flexibility in how we share the information we have. Getting out of those silos or repositories. That you, know, you break down every one of those. It was about people having easier means to just share the information they already have and making it more widely available. That's what all of them are doing. Yes, there's more horsepower, like Andy brought up, be able to see more data faster, right? The you know big data engines and siphoning and finding sentiment and all this stuff. Yeah, we're building more complex systems that can now read the data that we've had for years and do it logically, which we haven't been able to do before. Do I like the term work works? No. I don't, I don't really right. like that one very much, but <laughs> that's, that's a semantic grammar thing that your grandmother would beat you up for. But it's a, <laughs> it's a matter of they're just trying to tell you that, you know, Start changing the way that you look at the data that you have. And that's the big push with all of them right now is, is analyzing big data, analyzing employees. And, you know, they talk about, you know, socializing and how we easily share files. It's a new UI, right? We've always had the ability to do it. They're just trying to make it easier for you. And that's what the push for the product line was, was, oh, you can now drag and drop here in auto-sync files. You can now share this to multiple people. Well, you always could, but it was in a file share that then people had to go look at manually. Now they have a magical stream that tells you it was there that then disappears after a few minutes. So it's just about changing the way that your daily processes work, and IBM's really trying to capitalize and build a good stack on that. Rob brought up the presentation layer, which is interesting. Everyone should know it wasn't IBM software they used Mm -hmm. to do it, but it was more uh, supposed to be like a virtual conference center. So Mm -hmm. they had these videos playing, and they were live streamed at first. Now they're recorded, but they had sponsors in there you could chat with and things like that. So the idea was that it's widely available, uh, the replays are great now, and mm. I'm hoping they do keep doing some more things like that as they've played with different technology platforms over the years. Um, it makes it easy to watch again. I'll give them that yeah. much. So um, it's not easy. See, now there's one thing, though, with it. It's interesting is, is, like you said, keynote and widespread as it is, it's not easy to find because it's hidden. Mm-hmm. It's not searchable. It's not in Google. It's not. Right. It's, it's hidden behind a you've got to log in and create a register and all that stuff. So I wish this is also more widely available, so I could share it with customers easier. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, that makes you, know a lot it's, sense. you know, it's like it, it's like I got a lot of stuff in my garage, but I can't find any of it. You know? <laughs> um, and that's that's the same way as as it is now. We've got so much data out there, and uh, if it's not presented well, if it's not if it's not delivered well, uh, we got nothing. You know, I just got a, a bunch of stuff. I'll be surprised to find in three years. You know, yep. basically. So, yeah. I like well, we could install um, a mini Watson in your garage for you, and you could catalog <laughs> yeah. everything. That's Maybe I'm like. afraid of what I will find if I look in the garage. That's right? the whole point. It's like your closet. Actually, actually there's a there's a, a 1981 IBM PC in the garage. Um, 
<laughs> with 48K have, of RAM. You know, see, so. we're going way back. I have an NEC dual boot five and a quarter floppy working machine with WordStar. Nice. Yeah. So I mean, we all have Impressive. the old stuff, but guess what? You'd never find what's on those discs. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I have an abacus right on you my do. desk here. I bet you I do. You <laughs> I bet you do. What was but next up on so the list? For so into the vision of the cloud that they gave, um, I, I had an experience just yesterday that really drove it home for me. I arrived at the office yesterday. I opened up my bag after a long weekend, uh, and I somehow had neglected to put my laptop in there. Okay. Um, which <laughs> would generally hamper you from uh, doing your work. And I, you know, let loose with a nice stream of profanity and then realized I have another computer handy, though it doesn't have all of the stuff on it. But the reality is 90% of the projects I'm working on, all of my work product is in the cloud right now. And I worked all day yesterday and really, other than not having all my music handy, which I guess I could have gotten off of my phone, I had everything I needed right at my fingertips in the cloud. Um, and, and that's really a big change in how to work. You know, so if I had wanted to use my iPad, you know, other than the typing element, I could have done pretty much anything I needed because it was all right there. Yeah, I mean, we used to keep uh, servers around in the office, and one by one they'd been falling apart because they were really old, and uh, I haven't missed them. I haven't missed taking care of them. I haven't missed uh, backing them up or anything like that. Uh, it's, it's really been remarkable, and I've been I've been taking it for granted. When we when I first talked about about cloud, I was I was very cynical. I'm always very cynical about everything, but I was super okay. cynical about the cloud because I kind of figured, oh, what happens when the cloud goes away? But the cloud doesn't seem to go away. That's really the weird part. It just seems to hang in there. We hope. So, so I'm curious, did uh have any of you guys installed the uh the native connections mobile app that Luis Benitez demoed? Have you installed it or had a chance to play around with it? I have. What about you guys? I mean we can I'll go first this no. time while they while yeah, they install yeah. it. Go ahead. <laughs> while they in, well you guys can install it and then well, you know, then you can talk about it in a minute. No, I I've installed it. It's gotten better over time. Uh it's gotten more mm -hmm. functionality, it's gotten more flexibility. Uh it's become uh, your, your connections environment has to be beneficial to you to want to use the actual mobile app, of course. I guess that's one mm -hmm. of the key things I want to say is you, you really have to have a connections environment that's beneficial. Hooking to the greenhouse to test is great. Um, mm. I mean, he, he showed the ability was out there. I mean, Social BizLog has the you know connections yeah. environment. But you've got to have content, and that's yep. the biggest part is, is the content there. Now, does it make it any easier? Eh. If it's the, and one of the weird things I find, in a large, large company like IBM, this makes perfect sense, is profiles. If Andy and Rob had a profile system at their office to find expertise, they have an issue because it's Rob and Andy, right? right basically. <laughs> so it's a problem if you don't know who does what. In most companies, you're well aware of who does what. So searching for an expertise is a foreign thing to a lot of companies that don't have tens of thousands of employees. Yeah, um, I... Go ahead. I got a, I got one that has that has a, a fifteen thousand, and trying to find the right guy that's right. going to tweak the firewall for me is a real pain in the neck, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 people don't give up that information too easily. By the time I and I find the guy, and then there's two or three emails that go by, you know, we're, when when we get into a situation like connections, we're cutting the corners on all that stuff, you know. I think if you have a really good cheerleader for the, uh, for doing the social movement, you know, with the, with uh, with connections. Uh, that's really important. Not only the technology, but you need to have have a spirited person behind, a good leader, who can who can guide you through it and set things up for you so that it can work well and so that you can find people and, and collaborate well. Now, go ahead, I, I butted in. No, you didn't really butt in. You brought so you know you bring up a good point. So you know you're talking about a profile. So that means that person would have to say, "I'm the firewall guy," or they'd have to have tags around firewall. Or, so there's a whole population of data that goes around it that people aren't usually comfortable with doing. We're we're free to share on Facebook, but in the enterprise. Uh, we don't share all our skill sets, all our certifications, all our knowledge areas. All, we don't we do not do it. And the HR system doesn't capitalize on that to push it into connections, meaning that data isn't there. People have to put it there uh, for the most yeah. part. But I, I, say, I think that, re that, that really goes to something that I know Luis has talked about you know, many times before. Um, I, 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 not to put words into his mouth, but right. that the tool with social networking is really not – as critical and the t having a, 
an easy to use, high quality, available tool is terrific. But then the really important thing is the cultural aspect that if you have an organization that has a mindset that they're ready to start sharing this kind of information and to start acting in a social way, uh, the tool you have doesn't become as important. You know, obviously, you're going to be able to get to that point a lot more quickly with something like the newest version of Connections, which really facilitates putting that information in, and you're not going to have as much frustration on the user's part uh, with things being challenging to do. But really, it, it's much more about changing the mindset in your organization and being ready to share and being ready to be social. Uh, because without that, it doesn't matter what tool you have. Right. Well, what about, I mean, there's one of their areas, not just files, which everyone's sharing, but then communities too. And communities are still growing and blossoming on there. Uh, there's a lot more work to be done around the community idea. Uh, people don't know what they're supposed to put there, you know, because it's a subset of the same data that I have yep. at the root level. And it, it's just a, they understand a, a group inside, like I said, inside of Facebook. I, but it's not, you don't share all the same data. Uh, communities is very heavily involved, and you can have really, really big communities uh, with lots of data inside of it. And exposing that is another problem because that keeps it kind of hidden from the rest of the company. You know, you get around privacy issues again. And what if it's a project that you can't share with everybody? Well, then you can't search that data if you're someone else in the company, which means I'd never find it as a relatable project. So there's a whole bunch of things that companies have to look at in terms of governance and privacy and you know, uh, trade secrets and IP and everything else. Right. I think that, that gets back to, and we're getting a little far afield here, That's right. but the shift, the shift in mindset that's really been slowly happening over a period of time that it used to be um, most people involved in IT took the position that any given piece of data, we should apply the maximum amount of security to it, yep. and then as people need it, remove it, so that everything should be secret, and then if you needed access to it, we should give it to you. But the reality is, and this seems counterintuitive to a lot of longtime IT people like you know, myself, is that the vast majority of things, at least inside the firewall within an organization, really aren't secret. I mean, the things that are secret are uh, formulas, uh, maybe detailed financials, salary information, but outside of that, most of the information of day-to-day -day doing business would be better if it were shared. So it's building that taxonomy of what's shared and what isn't, but with the initial mindset that you want to share the maximum amount of information, not the minimum, um, and hide the things that really will make a difference if um, exposed to the wrong people. But everything else, everyone should be able to find. Now, if I'm uh, an HR person with an interest in marketing, I should be able to find in information about marketing and maybe contribute to the discussion. Uh, and, I, and I think that a, a lot of this stuff that used to be um, controlled by IT um, is now opening up and being given back to the people to, to reinsert into the information stream. Um, you know, it used to be that all the demographic data was kept with, were kept with HR, and they were the, the holy grail of packaging as far as all of that, that data. And it's getting away from that to, to the point where people are invited to fill out profiles and tell, tell you what kind of degrees they have, tell, tell you what kind of certifications that they have. And that makes them um, easier to collaborate with if you know more about them. Um, and that, that's a critical change. I'm working on a project right now where um, there, there is a, a, a there is a, a bunch, there are three different groups of people, three different uh, domains, and uh, formally, prior to this project, they did not really collaborate with each other. As a matter of fact, there was, there was sometimes uh, some real rough edges when they, when they uh, collaborated with each other. So now they're uh, moving to, uh, uh, to, to, the, uh, to the smart cloud, and, um, and it's causing a, a, a deep psychological change in the way that they're working within, within the enterprise. And, and I, I found that to be really interesting because I'm a, I'm a tech guy, but I'm always fascinated to see what happens with, with the human beings when, the, when we move this stuff around. Yeah, that is, that's, real, that's a really interesting observation. Uh, my last question for you guys. Uh, we also saw a bit of Same Time 9. So what, in your expert opinions, are some of the best features in that, that new Same Time 9? Uh, they're celebrating with fire engines as we talk. 
<laughs> there's a parade. There's a parade. Uh, the best features, uh, first and foremost, is the multi-point video that there's now native inside of it with new mm -hmm. yeah. uh, video managers, video control units, and video managers. So basically removing the need for you to have a partner solution to have multi-point good quality video. They've redone the uh, codecs that are involved, and they've created the, they have to use the old term, the Brady Bunch effect, so you get the, the Hollywood Squares effect. But yeah. the ability to have, you know, nine people in a nice, high-def quality type of video solution with bandwidth, of course, if you have it, in the, you know, the network for it. But uh, the ability for you to do that, and that's a uh, simple, you know, point and click, invite people, add people, and have some controls over it, that is a huge improvement uh, for a lot of companies that were looking for that type of solution. It would have helped on our call today. It would have, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, just I, Rob's old uh, work the web shirt. That's right. I, I, I really, I'm, I'm with you on that one, though, Chris, because uh, I, I really like that same thing. It is, it is the unifying thing that's inside of, uh, of the cloud is to be able to go the whole route. You can send an email if you want. You can do an IM if you want. You can do uh, uh, an audio chat if you want. And if, and if you want, you can see what somebody looks like and actually, um, and actually look into them. And and that it, what it's doing is it's 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 uh, uh, one of the points that they made is that it's giving rise to the independent worker again somebody who doesn't necessarily have to work on premises uh, any more than they go to work I mean they don't have to do that anymore because they have all the means of communication and uh, communicating between two offices and next that are next to each other is pretty much the same as um, going transcontinental you know going to Europe or going to to uh, Eurasia or whatever. Um, and having direct face-to-face -face communications with them. I remember when they first talked about video, they said, we won't have to travel anymore. Yay. You know, and I was kind of dis disappointed because it meant I couldn't take a trip to Italy to shut down a server. But, but truly, uh, being able to sit at my desk and communicate with all the different customers at once and have them all understand what's going on is, is great. And I think that this, this uh, new edition of video, this kind of quality of video at the same time, is, uh, is really a, a game changer. Yeah, that's one of them. The rest of the pieces are, are pretty minor in terms of capabilities, but that's, I think, the big sell, and that's what they talk about a lot in a lot of the video. Oh, I think the, one other thing is the continual march to the simplified interface mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and it, making meetings easier. Because if, if you look at what the real um, stumbling block, to some extent, of old same time meetings were, you know, the, the uh, classic version was that they were clunky, and the interface was lousy and challenging. Apple. And, yeah, and right, the compatibility wasn't there half the time. Um, and so this has incremental improvements in that respect as well. So anything in that space is welcome. And that's gone now. People, yeah, people should know in, your, uh, the, in the actual same time nine on the collaborations around the Domino server piece, there is no more meeting services. It's gone. Um, so if you want to keep doing the old classic meetings, you have to stay at the 8.5 code stream or get prepared to move and install the WebSphere piece. Oh, that got that just killed the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that Not killed it right there. But no, that's that, that seriously is you know one of the pieces that's gone. And there's a lot of companies that you know weren't moving into it, which kind of changes some of their things about entitlements and other things they want to deal with. Um, you know how they want to okay. deploy their stuff. That's actually another somewhat big deal with Nine that they just barely touched on was, you know, watch the video if you want to know the details. But they did pretty substantially simplify the licensing. Oh yeah, you know, to where you now have a, a license that represents meetings, a license that represents chatting, and a license that represents both. And of and, course, there's and, more details than that, but yeah, that's what it is. Now. Collaborate conference and complete and then also there's the telephony stuff involved too the whole you know united telephony sut stuff involved in there as well so those pieces are there. three type of licenses now now that doesn't mean for people so if they're listening to this podcast the first time they've heard it and haven't seen a webcast or anything else you still have the old entitlement piece that's totally different this is for licensing models if you had entry before then you're going to need to move to the collaborate one which means you have to call ibm for the migration for it meaning the license not the actual you know software migration, but the license migration, and uh, you'll get more capabilities with it. But the entitlement piece, the single community free chat piece still exists, but it's not part of these three offerings. It's, these are totally new ones, as Rob was saying. 
Well, very cool. That's, uh, that's a lot of really awesome information. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy days to uh, to talk to me and to the community. They just needed time away from each other. It's okay. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, thank you to you, our listeners. Make sure to check out socialbizug.org. It's a user group community built entirely on Connections, Domino, and XPages technologies. And it's built for IBM Notes and Domino administrators and developers. Membership is completely free, so sign up today. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at SocialBizUserGroup. Thanks. Thank you.